We have this unconscious mind that actually controls about 95% of all the things that we do. And it comes from experience and the things we experience not having killed us yet. So it likes to maintain that status quo. It is lazy. It will conserve energy. And so if things are going just great, it's from its perspective of you're not dead yet, it's going to keep you there, which means you have to have something extra, some extra oomph if you want to change your behaviors. And you have to use your conscious mind, which is responsible for about 5% of what we do, to overcome that default setting, that status quo that keeps us stuck. And so looking at it from that perspective, it's no wonder it requires practice to change behaviors, to develop a new habit, to be frustrated when you can't find your keys three days after you've discovered that you want to can find your keys more regularly and set up some sort of system to hang them on a hook or put them in a special pocket in your purse or whatever it is. Um, and that on day three or four, you can't find your keys because you haven't yet taught your brain that that's where the keys go yet. It takes repetition, lots and lots of repetition. We're rewiring that unconscious part of our brain when we want to change behaviors. So it's not easy. It's simple. There are specific steps that can happen that make it work longer term, but it's not easy because we have to overcome the desire of our unconscious brain to keep things uh, not expanding too much energy, expending too much energy. It's going to try to serve energy every way it possibly can because you never know when you might have to run from a tiger on the savanna. I'm sorry, lion on the savanna. <laughs> Tigers are a little more jungle oriented, aren't they? Um, so what we want to do is recognize that that's what's going on. Once you recognize that, it's much easier to in the moment go, oh, I'm just defaulting to bad behavior right here and I need to overcome it with some better behavior right here. So we want to look at that curious factor, that how to be better every day, not I'm a failure, I can't do it, look, it failed once, I'm not going to try again. But from a, that didn't work, let me examine what I can do to make it easier next time. What can I do to recover? What can I do to cut myself a little grace so that I can try it again tomorrow? That's what we're looking for. And one of the easiest ways to stay motivated through a transformational change, which is something that gets rewired in your brain so that things are actually different. You experience life differently when it's transformation and not just fixing yourself. Um, it, when you look at it from that perspective, it's so much easier to stay motivated if you have a juicy desired outcome. And a juicy desired outcome is something that is aspirational. It pulls you forward. You practically feel it in your cells. So instead of just wanting to be more organized, why do you want to be more organized? What are you hoping to achieve on the other side of that organization, right? What's all the effort to make it happen going to help you do on the other side of it? What can... Um, what are you seeing? And a lot of times when we haven't practiced looking at our aspirations, when we go along um, and things are fine um, or it's just the way it is, there's we get to a point where there's a lack of curiosity, a lack of exploration, a lack of opening your mind to see what's possible. And so you have to practice that part of it as well. So there's repetition, there's practice on several levels. There's the actual behaviors, there's the um, learning how to be aware of when your behaviors aren't matching what you want your outcomes to be. And there is actually practicing imagination for possibility and and aspiration of what you want to be different. So it pulls you forward instead of saying, I'll never be like that. I can't get there. I've never been able to achieve that. It's the simple things, the self-talk, simply changing I can't to I don't. When you change something to I don't, it makes it your choice. You've decided that you don't do something versus it's happening to you. I have no control whatsoever. We have limited control. We do not have full control. So see how it works on both ends. You can't control everything, but you can control some things. And what you want to do is maximize what you are in control of and make that control serve where you would like to be, how you really want to live.